What's up, guys? Toby, 508. Hey, we're going to do something different today. I don't know if you'll like it, don't like it, won't, will like it, whatever. But we're going to try something different today. I'm going to show you how I airbrush. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a professional. I'm, I'm not all, you know, this and that. But I've got a few different baits I'm going to paint today. But uh, for the video, we're going to do this one. I love this one. It's a little smaller. And I, I can fish it more on my regular tackle instead of this big gargantuan thing that, uh you know, takes heavier tackle and all that good stuff. But there's all types of different baits. Uh, I get all of mine from uh, Sugar Tit. There's others you can get them from. Lure Build, I'm not affiliated not, you know, with nobody. But uh, Sugar Tit is local to me. They're a South Carolina-based company. And I like, you know... Staying with them. So we'll go over some paints and stuff too. You're gonna to hear some different terminology because it's just sunk in my head. There's others that I watch. Um oh, Jekyll. Jekyll by what man, that lady is awesome. She makes and paints some awesome baits. But anyway, you're gonna hear heat shrink uh heat setting. That's just a hair dryer. Still up from your old lady, your girlfriend, whoever. Um and that's what we're going to do. It's going to be different. We're going to use some, I'll show you what I use. Uh, Createx, use it a good bit, but I have also, I have fallen in love with these. I don't know if they're supposed to be used, but this is a green highlight. There's other colors. There's gold highlights. There's blue highlights, just like with uh, soft plastics. <clears throat> Only thing is this is in a paint form. So that green, it just gives you that green shimmer. It's not a solid color, but it's the same as uh as we do with plastic. I have this little thing. It's just to clean out your brush. And uh, I do noises and sounds all the time. But um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint this and some things we're going to use. I have a, I have two. I have a Iwata Neo and a Master. I don't even remember the model of it. <coughs> we're going to use this stuff. And again, I probably shouldn't have wore a white shirt because I know I get paint everywhere and I make a mess sometimes. But we're going to use this just to make our scale pattern that I use in my um, gizzard shad that I make. Uh, we have gizzards here, so as well as bluebacks and shad. But anyway, these are the baits that I like to paint. Other people like them. And it's a whole lot cheaper than buying them for $75, $100 at your local big company sporting goods place so we're gonna try it i don't know about angles and crap trying to film it this way so we may just uh may bring it up here and sort of do it in front of you if not i'll do the best i can so i apologize ahead of time and i'm gonna have to edit a lot of this because of the changing of the colors and maybe having to clean out a jam or something like that so bear with me let's paint some baits let's get started all right, guys, we're going to get started. Uh, I have went in and I've already painted white. I did my base coat white. Um, simple reasons, but, you know, white is your a good base coat. You'll use a black or a dark if you're going to use, like, a color shift. And we're going to make our base on the top of this and our pattern in black because we're going to go back over it with this gold highlight. So I want it to show better, so that's why I'm going to put a, a black top down and then go back. Uh, it's a real easy pattern for me, and I actually go back in uh, stencils to make my little gizzard shed dot. Again, we'll use this, but also there's times I go in and I'll just use a brush and paint in some details that I want. I may put a little gold, you know, down by the fins and stuff like that, but uh, let's get started and just show you what I do. Um, I don't know how it would be best to do that. I could pull this out, maybe get it closer. Let's try this. I'm going to paint everything, though, that I work on. <laughs> this is just stuff uh, stuff that I hang with. And some more blanks down here. I got some ploppers, some DT10s, stuff like that. And you can see here, you're going to make a mess. You're going to be changing colors. So that's why my <clears throat> paint is so messed up. All right, the reason I like these real thin paints, I can dial it down to, like, 10 or less than 10. And I don't get any bad problems. Well, I mean, you know, clogs are not near as bad. But anyway, what I do on my gizzard shed, I come down basically in this area here, the top third of the bait is where I'll come down to. And uh, 
I'm going to do it first with the stencil. And the reason I do that is I'm going to go back and darken in the top solid. And of course the eyes, stuff like that. So I'm going to start out by just placing this. These things are harder because these they swivel at the bottom, which is great for your hook sets and all. But I'm just going to put this on here. And I'm going to come lightly with my black. This is going to give you that sort of scale pattern that you're looking for. It comes down the bait. And it'll fade in. I like that part. And I also like these baits with the, uh, the bristle type look on it. Um, again, it's up to you on what type of bait you get or whatever. But I like them that way. And... That's how we get a, a little scale pattern that comes down the bait. And I'll flip it around and do the exact same thing on this other side. I think I need to probably get me a GoPro or something to where I can make a little bit better of video. Because I'm sure I'm covering up what I'm doing here. But this is just a, you know one to start with to see how... See if anybody likes it or wants to learn it. Um, again, it's not that hard because if it was, I couldn't do it. I'm not no big artist or whatever. You want to hold your stencil either really still or you can tape it on there if you want to. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect because fish aren't perfect. Now, once I've got that part done, I came down about as far as I want. I think I came down a little bit further on this other side. So let's just come down just a hair further. Uh, other guys that do this, uh, the other one I thought about that I watch a lot is uh, Clark's, I think it's Clark's Hill Custom. Now, with this brush type, rear end or the tail i'm sorry i like to go ahead and hit it lightly with black as well heavier on the top and the very bottom both sides and then we'll just lightly spray the rest of it to just darken that tail up now will it stay i really don't know like I said, the one that I like to fish, the brown bristles are a lot stiffer and tougher, and it holds the color a little bit better. So once we've got that, that is our base pattern. That's There's our scale pattern down the side of the bait. And it's not wanting to stay straight, but once I finish there, I just come in and I darken the eyeballs. That just helps it pop more. When you put your eyes on. And I'm also going to show. I'm going to put. I'm going to come down just a little bit more in the face. Of the bait. Because I like it a little bit lower down there. So let's drop it down a little bit lower. And then I'm going to make the top solid. I'm not going to spray over what we just did, but I'm just going to go across the very top of it right here. And again, I like these thinner paints because I can dial it down. I'm probably at 10 PSI probably. And there's our solid back. We just went in and made it solid. Now, I want my, and you get messy, so, or I get messy, I probably wear, should probably wear gloves. And I want my kill dot. So my kill dot, or not really a kill dot, but if you know anything about a gizzard chad, they have, it, it isn't round, so I use this. Probably do, mm, no, it ain't. It's just one piece of a, a stencil that you cover like a 110 jerk bait with, but I like that dot right there. So I just come in here, I'll put the dot where I want it. 
I don't want it super dark. I want it natural looking. And we just make our little kill dot right where I want it behind the gill plate. Flip her around and do the exact same thing. Only difference is it's on the other side. I'm holding things with my left hand. They want to shake a little bit. Oh, I put that one way back. So, I got one up close, oops, and one towards the back, but it happens, it is what it is. Now what I'll do is I'll just heat set this thing. And like I said, all heat setting is is a, there's a hair dryer. And that's all we're doing. So he said it. Then we're gonna come back. Um, there's things you can do. You can add some silver down here in the body of the bait to make it <clears throat> look a little more beat up like a real deal gizzard. Um, not gonna do that today, but I am gonna put some detail in with a brush and it's gonna be some of that gold that we're also gonna spray over the entire base of the bait, basically. To give it that gold flash but it'll change this black to almost a goldish brown a very realistic natural color i think so uh like green highlight blue light and the gold so stay stand by i'm gonna stop it clean this brush out because the black's in it and we got to put a light color in there so be right back all right guys we're back cleaned it out we've added our gold highlight i don't know if you can really see it or not, but well, it's by FW. I think I get it at ooh, uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby again. One of those two, or you can order it. Uh, there's several places to order your stuff. So when I make a change, especially with black, you want to give it some test runs to make sure that you are not shooting out any more black. And then we're just going to every, I'm basically going to shower this bait with that gold highlight. Um, everywhere, especially that's black, I'm going to hit it. And it just brings that highlight out. Spraying it over that black base. Probably really hard to see for you guys. So like I said, I'm trying it. I don't know how this is going to work or if it's going to work. I think I'm getting a little clogged. So if you are, close your tip. Try to clear it. Oh, there we go. And that gold highlight on top of that black just makes it beam. Now, I don't want to hit my kill dot, but what I do want to come in and do is hit some of this area around the gills pretty heavy because it is a highlight. It's not a solid color. Now, I may go back. Oop, sorry about that. Oh, Lord have mercy. I hit it deep right there. And I'm going to hit areas where, like you would see on a gizzard shad or a bait type fish, I'm gonna hit that gold, some on the bottom, not a lot, just a little bit. To give it them details that I'm wanting, I'm gonna hit the spin as well. And then I'm gonna go back and hit, the, hit that fin as well with a brush, because it's just easier for me, I think, sometimes to use the brush than it is the, um, the airbrush sometimes. Uh oh, see all that bubble right there? That means I'm clogged up pretty decently. So, let's 
let's try to clear it without having to go all crazy with the total clean out. There we go. I'll hit that fin real good just to have that gold highlight in it. Like I said, I'm going to go back and hit it as well with a little bit of black, but on a brush. I like to put a little of that gold back here in the back. And I really hope the camera will show. And in between the joints, we won't clear coat or use our sealer on that, but we will paint inside the joint. You don't want your clear coat in there. See how it changes that black to a goldish, brownish looking color. It just does a great, great job on that so that's basically my gizzard shed pattern it's not anything hard or or crazy i uh, will go back now and i will add some uh details with just a brush uh just old cheap uh brush i'll probably just get hundreds of packs at walmart or whatever and then we're going to add some eyes. We talked earlier on my bait making stuff about realistic eyes versus, you know, the ones I put on like the Helter Smelter. Um, I love these. They look good. They're not too expensive. But uh, I hope the glare ain't messing them up. But I go, when I do that color there, I use this more goldish eye. And it just really makes it pop. So when I'm going to add some stuff, I may even hit a little more solid gold. I'm going to take this Pearl X first i'm just going to squirt a little on a piece of cardboard just a drop probably couldn't even see that but and then i'm just going to take that gold and get a little bit on the brush like i said not a lot i want some of this to show better in the bottom of that fin so i'm going to add a little bit right there Just to give it that that little color that you get from a bait fish when you hold it up like that. I may even put a little bit down here, like at the bottom of the gill plate. Now, when you're going back with a brush, don't use a lot because you don't want it to run or have that that messed up look. Just use small amounts and slowly get it going. And brush it, brush it pretty good. Get it in there pretty good, thinned out. And I'm also gonna throw a little bit up here on the front. This is a satin, satin gold, I believe it is. Just enough to give it glares man let me just to give it the little accents that you want a little bit of gold in there um i like to have the accents in there i don't go crazy crazy with it but uh like i said certain things that you can do to make it look more realistic is adding the silver you know to make the scales look a little uh more beat up or whatever let's see if we pull this up if the glare isn't as bad there we go. I think that's a little better. You see what that gold highlight did on top of that black? It just makes it beam so much better. There it is. Looks black from one angle or dark. And then there you go. You got your gold highlight. Got a couple little spots where it sprayed out, but I'm cool with it. Uh, just makes it look, you know, a little bit more natural. They're always beat up looking or going through a hard time. So there we go. Now next, all I'll do is I'll add my eye. I'll heat set that first. And uh, you ain't got to go crazy with your heat set. <laughs> all it does is basically dry that paint for you. And 
that's about all I do right there. No more than that. And then we'll take and we're going to add, add our eyeballs. After we add our eyeballs, we'll get into a, just a real quick on what I do with um, my clear. And my clear will be KBS Diamond Finish. Uh, there's several different companies, several different types. Um, this isn't, like I said, something that I do all the time or a lot of, so I stick with what I have. I want to try some others. Ooh, sorry, it roamed on me a little bit. I want to try some others, but uh, I like the finish that I get with the KBS. So if it ain't broke, I don't want to fix it. And on, on my painted baits, like I said, I put a lot better quality eyes on there. Get down. And this is going to be our golden color. Oop. I'll say just a lot more realistic eye than, like I said, than I would put on soft plastics. And just, you can see what putting a, a good eye on a bait does. The difference it looks. And I put them in and I'll clear over that. The difference with these bigger baits, usually I open the KBS up and I'll, um, I dip baits. That's why you see these up here that are hanging. Um, that's just a keychain for someone, but uh, dip them, hold solid. Now with this, I have to take a brush and use the brush and brush it on. And I really like doing that better anyway, because if I don't want as much clear, the KBS is a little thick, but I don't mind it. But when I brush it, I can control that a little bit. And for me, the KBS seems to um, work better as far as smoothing itself out as you hang it and let it cure. And there we go. I go with just a hair bit smaller eye because I don't want it. I think that's a 10 millimeter and I think you can go up to a 12. So again, that just makes your bait so much better. So more realistic looking. And like I said, I do this same pattern. It's the same exact thing except for where that's the gold highlight, I will do blue and a greenish. Uh, I really like the green and the gold better to me. It's just more natural looking to me. And I might have went a little thick with it, but I like it. I like it a lot. like it a lot. So, go over real quick the uh, clear process. I, like I said, use the KBS. I go to Harbor Freight and just buy whatever these are called. I've got so much junk in the way. It's just paint brushes, cheap paint brushes. I think I paid a couple bucks for all these. And I'll get my KBS. Not gonna do it right this moment because I wanna clear all the other ones too once I get them painted as well. But I'll open up my KBS Diamond um, be careful if you put this stuff, or I finally threw it away, into glass jars and put plastic wrap on it. That's another way you can store it. But make sure that plastic wrap, you change it every time. If not, this stuff will set up, and this stuff is not cheap. Uh, I think this is 50 bucks, or around 50 bucks for this size. I had gotten the bigger canister before, and it set up on me in a jar, even though I've done everything correctly. So, so be careful with that. Make sure your plastic on top of your mason jar or whatever you want to call it um, does it. And that's the basic base gizzard shad pattern for me. Not hard. All you need is something that'll make, you know, your whatever you want to call it, your kill dot or whatever. Me, I use that one spot off of this stencil. You can cut it out on a piece of paper and use it. We use this wire ribbon or whatever this is called this ribbon to make our scale pattern up top. 
I don't go crazy with the scales because this bait has scales. When you're spraying, other things you can do, instead of spraying directly straight down on a bait, spray at angles when it has the scale pattern in it. It's not a smooth bait, has the scales in it. If you'll shoot it at an angle, like coming across this way or downward, where your scale pattern is, it'll actually hit them sides, the higher peaks of it, and it'll show that definition a whole lot better of the scales. But that's what, what I do. I'm not a professional. Again, there's some guys out there that do amazing work. Clark's Hill Custom, uh, Jekyll Baits. I uh, watch them a lot because they just make awesome baits. And again, I, I just do it for me and, you know, course for my business but uh there's other things we do the keychains uh top waters some of my favorites uh i'm not a big plopper fan but a lot of people are but get good quality blanks i get these from sugar tit i, I like theirs uh there's lure build i ordered from them as well but again i like the local guy this is one of my favorites it's the dt10 knockoff basically but it's it's the same thing so uh, you can pay what you want to at the store for these. These blanks run from, uh, you can get some of the economy <clears throat> blanks for less than a buck. But the premium blanks are maybe a dollar and a half, two dollars. They're about double the price. And you can just tell they're quality blanks, number one. But they run true. They're weighted. If you strip down a real deal DT10 or whatever. You're going to get that same. I mean, it's exactly the same. Uh, the ploppers that they sell, this is my favorite style. I've seen the plastic. I should have probably took it out. But it comes with all your hardware. That style I like better. Uh, I've sold a good many of those. Uh, four inch, five inch top water baits. There's fives, fours. There's frogs. There's poppers. I uh, made this one just because one lake likes, I ain't got my hooks all the way on, and I haven't added the hardware yet, but uh, one lake likes pink. So I put that pink on there, and it'll be going to that lake for me. Whenever the freaking weather gets right and isn't so crazy, and she, Mother Nature takes a chill pill because it's blowing right now like crazy. But... Let me know what you think, if uh, you think this was even worth making a video, uh, or if I should do some other baits uh, to not make it so long. I didn't want to do two or three at one time. And again, there's different styles. Uh, I like this smaller gizzard shed myself. Skirt. This one here, I love that one. Uh, it's not as big, not as heavy. I can throw it on more regular tackle or uh, rod and reels that I already have. I don't have to go buy a big setup just to throw this big monstrosity here. Uh, I can't remember the weights on it off the top of my head, but seven, eight ounces, somewhere in there. I think it's seven and some change on this one. I do like the brush tails better than the ones. I don't mind the hard one, but when you get into it's another style that I want to paint, but I've got to get this tail on correctly. Uh, these little plastic tails are a pain in the butt to get in there because they're really, really soft. So it takes me a while and I have to take a break sometimes and not lose my mind on it. But anyway, I like those better. They hold up better, I think, and they'll hold the color a little bit better. You can't really paint these and expect it to stay. So other than that, good quality blanks. You can tell by the... Where your weights are embedded, stuff like that. If you look at other, you know, the ones that are selling for 75, 100 bucks, they're all set up the same. These ride true. They run true. I like them. So, anyway, I appreciate you being here. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more of that, we'll do it. If you don't, I won't do it. It don't matter to me. So, I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a great week. I'm still having a good day from yesterday. I don't know why, but having a good day. So appreciate you being here. Let me know what you think. Let's go catch some fish. We'll see you.